All right, don't give up. Um, you know, you look at all the things that are going on uh, in our world today, uh, and if you watch the news very long, you're going to be depressed uh, because, you know, wars, uh, rumors of other wars, uh, pestilence, earthquakes, you could just go all the way down through uh, sickness, cancer. Uh, and, you know, as Christians, uh, we are not exempt from those things. All right, just because we get saved and, uh, you know, Christ is in our life uh, doesn't mean, you know, bad things. Bad things can happen to good people. And uh, so t tonight, I, I just really want to encourage you in the faith uh, not to give up. Uh, to not, you know, uh, just feel like there's a hopeless uh, situation. Uh, because my Bible says with God all things are possible. And uh, he is still in the miracle business and he can certainly help us. And I want to start out in John chapter 10. If you'll just go with me to John chapter 10, verse 10. John 10:10 10, 10 says... The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. And who is the thief? Everybody knows. It's Satan, folks. All right? He is a thief. He is a liar. Uh, he wants to steal our joy. He wants to kill our testimony and destroy our faith. And you could put those in any order that you want to do. But this is Jesus speaking. But I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. You know, he could have used the word just abundantly there, but he uses the word more abundant. And folks, if you actually look at the blessings that you have in life and the tribulation that you have in life, I guarantee you your blessings far outweigh your tribulations and trials and even test in some cases. But yet we sometimes dwell on the negative part of that. And I just want to encourage you, it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter uh, what other people say. Uh, God knows where you are. God knows what's going on in your life, and God cares deeply about your situation, and I hope uh, you will understand that. All right, don't give up. Number one, let me give you the outline. Keep on going. Keep on going. If you're looking on your sheet there, number two, keep on growing. Keep on going, keep on growing, and number three, keep on glowing, all right? These are three things that we need to do as Christians, to keep on going, keep on growing, and to keep on glowing. Look at verse 1, chapter 4, verse 1 of 2 Corinthians. Therefore, since we have this ministry, what ministry, folks? We all are in the ministry. I know it's not called professional staff position. But if we have Christ in our life, uh, he has given us a gift and we have a ministry. And in this ministry, we need to point others to Jesus. The number one thing is pointing people to Jesus. And I, I think another thing that's very, very important in the ministry to encourage those around us. So therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, and you think about it, we, if all you had was salvation, would that be enough? I think so. I do. If all we had was salvation, folks, that is spending eternity with Jesus Christ. That would be enough. And, and folks, that's God's mercy. Okay, so we can't say we don't have anything. Folks, we have the most important thing, and we have made the most important decision of our lives. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, do not lose heart. What does it mean to lose heart? In some ways, it could be, uh, you know, giving in. Just saying, I've had it, I'm done, I'm throwing in the towel. I'm tired of trying, I'm try tired of trying to be a certain way, I'm tired of doing this. And folks, we, we need to understand, I mean, even in the ministry, I get tired in the ministry, my physical body, all right? I'm 63, and I just, I cannot do what I used to do, all right? And I'm, again, I was called young man today, and I said, thank you, sir, uh, when they said that. But I still physically can't, and there are times in my life 
in, in certain schedules and certain things. The two times Steve and I did four funerals in nine days, twice we have done this in the last six months. I'm telling you, when I got to the fourth one, there was nothing left in the tank. I had nothing, and I was tired. But as I lay in bed, and sometimes, anybody else do this? You're, you are so tired you can't sleep. You are just exhausted. But I thought of the four families that we helped. And it wasn't one of my family. Of course, it was church family. But I'm just saying, even at that, man, don't lose heart. Don't give up. You have a ministry. God is going to help you. God is going to give you the strength. Now look down in verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthly vessels. Okay, we are God's creation. And folks, truthfully, we are the clay. Okay, he is the potter. He, he, he molds us. He makes us into who we are. And so there's the physical issue that we have in our life when we get tired or we get sick or we get run down, okay? But it says, uh, but we have this treasure in earthly vessels that the excellence of the power of God uh, uh, may be of God and not of us. And here's what I found out. A lot of times when, when I get exhausted and I get tired, I am thinking of myself. But folks, what I know to be true is when there is a ministry situation, God always gives us the strength to go through those times in our lives. He is there. Yes, our bodies get tired. Yes, we have these earthly vessels. But folks, we have to use these earthly vessels for God's glory. That's what we do. That's what we are about. Then look at verse 8. It says, keep on going. We are hard-pressed on every side. Deadlines, uh, you know, there's pressure on us. Uh, there's performance things at work that we need, you know, that may be oppressing on us. There's all kinds of things. Uh, we are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed. Folks, there's a lot of things I don't understand. Okay, I don't have an answer to every issue of life, but I know someone who does, all right? God has an answer to everything in life, and that answer can be found in his word. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Despair is just, you know, I, I don't know what to do. I can't, you know, I, I'm, I, you know, I just want to throw up my hands. I just, I just want to quit. Folks, we don't, we don't have to despair. Why? Because the power of God, the Holy Spirit, and folks, I'm just telling the, the Holy Spirit gives us that dunamis. It was described as where we get our word dynamite. Okay? If we will uh, empty ourselves of ourselves, I am telling you that Holy Spirit can kick in and can encourage us in the faith. Faith. Verse 9, persecuted but not forsaken. And we don't we really don't have a lot of persecution. Nothing like a third world country and places where you can't carry a Bible openly or where you can't share the gospel openly. Okay, persecution, it is light. It really is in America, but we are not forsaken. My Bible says, Hebrews 13, 5, he will never leave us, he will never forsake us. So I'm telling you, no matter what situation you're in, just Keep on going. I think of marathon runners, and I have a high admiration for marathon runners. I cannot, I can't walk 26.1 miles. But these folks, it's just amazing, and they have to train themselves, okay, to do that. And, and my, my deal, if, if you can run a marathon, there's really, I don't know anything that you can't do because of the discipline and the things it takes to do that. And so uh, we are not forsaken, is what he says. Uh, we, we are struck down, but not destroyed. Folks, sometimes Satan gets the best of us. Sometimes we fail. Man, I think of Peter. Peter failed miserably in a time right before Jesus was going to the cross. He was struck down. He was knocked down. And I don't know, you know, us coaches, and when we coached, uh, when we were younger, you know, if you get knocked down seven times, what do you do? You get up again. It doesn't matter. 
All right, get up off the canvas. Get up and realize that in everyone fails. Okay, Michael Jordan considered one of the greatest basketball players there was. But you look at his shoot, he didn't even shoot 50%. Okay, baseball players. I mean, you look at somebody like Babe Ruth. Chuck, you may, you may know how many times he struck out. But I'm telling you, he struck out a lot. You can't hit a home run every time. Okay, don't count. Fa- Let me put it this way. Failure is never final. Okay, you may fail one time, but that don't mean you quit. Okay, you get in there and you keep going. Look at verse 10. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. Think about this. Think about what Jesus went through. Folks, I'm telling you, that last week of his life, that last 72 hours of his life, we will never go through something like he went through. So he did it. Jesus did it. You say, well, he was Jesus. Well, You know, we have Jesus in us. He had a human body. He bled. He sweat. He hurt. When they pulled his beard out, when they struck him in the face, okay, he didn't quit. Carrying it about, okay, carrying about. And there's also a a punishment. Uh, Romans like to put, and, and and it was crazy, folks, but they tie a dead man to a person and make them carry them around for a while. So it's simply saying We have an advantage over others because we have Jesus' example and Jesus inside of us. All right? And it says that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. I'm telling you, one of the greatest compliments you can, somebody can tell you is, you know what? Man, you're a lot like Jesus. You know, why didn't you get mad? Why didn't you quit? Why didn't you tell them off? Why didn't you? Folks, We are manifesting the grace and the mercy of Jesus in our lives. It's not easy, okay? Even in marathons, you know, a lot of people sprint. They'll they'll do it quickly for a while. But the Christian life is a marathon. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. And think about this. Why are you doing this? Folks, I was out, we were laying tile, and we had a deadline in Mexico and the day that we were doing the grouting outside under the sun, uh, the, the temperature was 106, and the heat index was 116 degrees. And we had Gatorade. We were pouring Gatorade. We were pouring cold water on it because we just said we were going to get this done before we left. And we got it done. And, and, and towards the end, the last hour, I am telling you, clouds came in from the west God helps you through every situation in life. That the life of Jesus may be also manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. Hey, can I get you in on a secret? You're going to (laughs) die. Can I give you another one? You're in the process of dying. Folks, we, we have to get rid of that negative connotation of death. I would count it a privilege, and I mean this, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I would count it a privilege to die in ministry for the cause of Christ, to give it all for Jesus. We're all going to die sometime, and I just soon do it for the cause of Christ as anything else. Job 1. I know you know this, but I'm just going to read the, the short part there. Job 1, verse 20. Then Job arose, and folks... He lost everything. Nobody in this room will ever go through. Human being, non-Jesus, he probably went through more than anybody else. He lost servants. He lost his kid. He lost his house. He lost his family. He had boils all over his body. Then Joseph robe, tore his clothes, shaved his head, and fell to the ground and worshipped. Folks, can we do that in the storms of life? Can we worship the Lord? Verse 21, and he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord taken away. And I love this. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Remember what his wife told him? (laughs) Curse God and die. Job said, I'm not going to do that. Folks, I'm telling you, to the end, to the end, folks, keep on going. You have made a commitment to our Lord Jesus Christ, and you can do it. You may think you can't do it. But my Bible says with God, all things are possible. 
I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So keep on going. Number two, keep on growing. And since we have the same spirit of faith, and think about that, folks. We have it. We have the spirit of faith. Verse 13, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore we speak. I believe he's talking about two things in our lives. The number one thing in our life is the Word of God. We have the Word of God to encourage us. The Word of God to encourage us. I'm telling you, you think of the Psalms. And, uh, they're called the Psalms and Songs of Comfort. Okay, lots of situations in life. And, and there, there are a lot of times, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, when I get down, sometimes when I need encouragement, sometimes when, uh, you know, you may be going through hard times. Uh, I'll start in Psalms chapter 1 and just start reading Psalms. Uh, there are so many good Psalms. Uh, you know, one is a, is a wonderful uh, Psalm. Of course, everybody knows Psalms 23, uh, Psalms 37, you know, uh, Psalms 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Okay. Psalms 50, Psalm 61, Psalms 92, Psalms 100. I mean, you can just go to the Psalms and let the Word of God minister to your soul. And the other thing it says, I believe is the Word of God, but therefore I speak. It's your testimony. Okay. Folks, I'm telling you, you cannot have a testimony without a test. T-E-S-T. -T. Test is our testimony. And the other thing in the Word of God is we have these people. They were just humans like you and I. And we have their testimonies. We can see what they went through and what they did. And folks, many, many times it encourages me uh, to know how human they are and to know how they rose above their circumstances. And folks, the, the deal is, you know, bad times does one or two things to you, okay? It either makes you better and a stronger person, or it makes you bitter. And, it, you know, that bitterness will just eat on you. You can always find something good, even in trials. Good things come out of trials, and that is so important uh, to, to remember. Look at verse 14. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise up with you Jesus and will present us with you. He done what? Folks, he raised the dead. I don't know any... I mean, the, I'm, the miracle of Easter. He rose from the dead. And that very person that rose from the dead is with us and in us, and beside us, and is an example to us. So we have God the Father watching over. We have Jesus Christ the Son who, who arose from the dead, and, and we have the Holy Spirit, all three of these things in us. Matter of fact, I'm telling you, I, I just don't think we should fear anything. Now, again, not being dumb about stuff, I, I have a great respect Okay, for crocodiles. <laughs> I have a great respect for snakes. But I'm not going to fear them. I'm not going to live in fear. Why? Because we have an earthly vessel. We have the Word of God to teach us, to guide us, and to show us. We have faith. We have prayer. It's not a, well, I hope so, salvation. It's not I hope God's up there somewhere. We have all these things that help us grow in our Lord. Now look what it says, verse 15. For all these things, I love this, are for your sakes. Folks, they're for you. They are there for you. And these things that, that God has, the Holy Spirit, the Bible, Christian friends, uh, all these things God has is for our sakes. And it says, the rest of that verse, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Folks, I'm telling you, how much grace do you need tonight? Folks, he's got it. How much love do you need tonight? He's got it. How much encouragement do you need tonight? 
He's got it. Causing thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Folks, we should be the most thankful people on this planet, on the earth. Look at Hebrews 12. Go with me to Hebrews 12. I want you to see this. Hebrews 12, verse 1. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which uh, easily ensnares us. And folks, sin slows us down. Okay, We are running the Christian race. We are all in the race. And, And again, we don't have to finish first in the kingdom of God. Because see, there's a physical kingdom which, you know, the racers and winners and losers and, you know, first, second, third, fourth, a consolation prize, they have all that. But in the spiritual races of life, all right, the, the, the whole thing is we are just supposed to finish, okay? Just don't quit. You, you are a winner. God's going to help you, okay? That, that's, that's what he's talking about here. Um, then, and let us run with endurance, okay? I uh, had a bill on my desk that Pastor Bob Shelton gave me, and I, I just set it on the front of my desk, and the little saying goes, if it were easy, everybody would be doing it, okay? If it were easy, everybody would be doing it. There's some things we have in life that are not easy, okay? They're hard, and it takes you know, grit, it takes intestinal fortitude, it takes determination, it takes, I'm not going to give in, I'm not going to give up. Run the race with endurance, uh, the race that is set before us. And here's the key, looking unto Jesus. Folks, Peter took his eyes off of Jesus, what did he do? He sank. And so many times in life, we are looking at our surroundings, we're looking at things, and it seems like, Man, I can't do this. I can't do this because we're looking at the ways. We're looking at other people. We're looking at the odds. Folks, I'm just telling you, you you have to understand the odds. The odds are already always four to whatever. See, it's not one. It is four. It is me, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. It's all four of us. We're all in this together. Looking unto Jesus, the author of and finisher of our faith. If you are not dead, you you have a reason and a purpose to be here, folks. He authored it. He's authorized it. He's going to see you until the end, and only he knows when. And folks, we just our goal is just keep running. Just keep running. And then it says, "Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross." The joy. All right? And I know when Jesus was on the cross, there was no joy in that at all. But you know what? I think, I truly think, even, and I'm not saying this was the place he did it, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he said, not my will, but thy be done. You think about that. Jesus came down from heaven. Okay, we are born on earth, and we live on earth, and is going back to heaven. But Jesus already lived in heaven. And can you imagine? It's like going home. If you've been away for a year from anything, you cannot wait to get home. And the joy, you know, in in Jesus' life, he endured the cross for you and I. But that joy comes from, man, I'm going home. I'm going home. And that's what it's saying. Despising shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Folks, life is not easy. Life is not fair. But he, he does and allows things to come on into our lives for our sakes. So don't give up. Keep going. Keep growing and keep glowing. Look at the last section here in our scripture. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Why do you say it twice? <laughs> it's for emphasis, folks. Don't lose heart. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel, even though our outward man is perishing. That's that physical part of our body. That's that tiredness. That's, that's that sweat. That's that hard work. That's that times when we feel like, you know, things aren't going our way or, or, you know, these things. It says, 
Do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet our inward man is being renewed day by day. Folks, every day, the Bible tells us God's blessings, they are renewed every morning. That's what I love about being a Christian. I can be exhausted. I can have a horrible day. But I still pray to my God and I still confess my sins. And then when I get up the next day, folks, we just start all over again. It's a new day. God is with us. That sun is going to rise. Everything is going to be all right. Now look at verse 17. For our light affliction. <coughs> I hope you understand who is, who is saying this. Folks, it's the Apostle Paul. And he had anything but light affliction in his life. I mean, uh, I remember 2 Corinthians where, uh, you know, I, I don't know the exact scripture. I think it's 12 uh, where he goes through the list. I was shipwrecked. I was left for dead. I was in the deep. I was stoned. And he went through all these things. But even then, he said, none of these things move me, folks. And that's the attitude. You know, uh, you, know you, can, you can even say to somebody, I'm going to wipe that smile off your face. Well, they can probably do that. But as a Christian, I'm just telling you, I, I'm not making fun of anybody. I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying whether they do that or not, I'm going to still serve the Lord. I'm going to still smile. I'm going to still say, thank you, God, for our light affliction. And, and I do believe that's talking uh, to us, which was but for a moment, is working for us far more exceedingly and eternally uh, weight of glory. Folks, I've said this before, and I've heard it before. What doesn't kill you will make you a better person. God is developing our character. God is developing our endurance. God is showing that it can be done through human being. God is giving you a testimony through all this. So don't lose that joy. Don't quit smiling. All right? Um, you know, our face tells so much about us, folks. Uh, you know, tr growing Christians should be glowing Christians. It really should. And it says, verse 18, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary. Okay? Everything that you can see is to everything. You look out here, you st st step outside, it's all temporary. It's all going to burn up eventually. The physical part of earth is going to do that. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Romans 8, 28. I know you know this verse. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called to his, according to, a purpose, to his purpose. What is it? All things work. It's for our good and it's for, our, for God's glory. See, a lot of times we look at things and how can good come out of that? Folks, I'm telling you, even in death, even in death, you can see good to funerals of children that I have done. Leighton was the one, uh, one that I did. I, it's been well over 10 years ago, and it, it was tough. We were in the old sanctuary. It's the most people that we've ever crammed in there. But yet, Landon and Missy asked me to give an invitation and present the gospel. 22 people were saved at Leighton's funeral just weeks ago. Same thing. And again, nobody told me to do it, but I was standing back watching people come in and I just saw all the difference. Scott, we talked about that. All the different kinds of people here. And I know four people raised their hand and they were saved. Now, again, I'm not saying, you know, God killed their child. Folks, it's life. It was an accident. But good came from a terrible, terrible accident. And, and that's what that verse means, for our good and for God's glory. 2 Corinthians 12. 2 Corinthians 12, just go over a few chapters. And basically, I'll, I'll skip the first part. There was a, Paul had a thorn in his flesh. 
A lot of people said, you know, well, he might have had cancer. Well, I'm not even sure they knew what cancer was back then. I personally believe because of the writings that he was going blind. And a preacher that's going blind, folks, that's not a good thing. Okay, not a good thing. And it says, verse 8, concerning this thing, I pleaded for the Lord three times that he might depart from me. Now, you would think of anybody that would get an answer to his prayers, it would have been Paul. I mean, logically, I hear that thinking. But, but he asked three times, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for you, for in my strength is made perfect in my weakness. God is perfecting you. God is giving you a testimony. While it seems unfair, God is maturing you. God is growing you. Therefore, most gladly, I'd rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, persecution, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The last thing, 2 Peter 3, 18. For Christ also suffered once for sins, for the just and the unjust, that he may bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh. Ooh, I think that's not right. I gave you the wrong one. 2 Peter, my fault, Steve, that's my fault. But let me give you the gist of it. But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, we never arrive. We have to keep growing. We have to keep glowing and we have to keep going. I read this, it's been several years ago, but I love this, and I close with this. The test of true ministry is scars, not stars. The test of true ministry is scars, not stars. Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you for your word. And God, I pray if there's one person here, even that is listening uh, on, on our live stream. God, I pray that you would encourage them in the faith. God, I pray that they would not give up. I pray that they would not give in. And God, I pray that they would just keep on going and keep on growing. And, and so important to keep on glowing. God, you have a reason and a purpose for everything we do, God. You do. We, 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 are, we are just clays. We are just vessels. You know our trials. You allow trials in our lives, and you use trials for our glory. So God, thank you for turning our trials into testimonies. So God, I pray that as we leave this place, that we would just remember someone who is just kind of down. To remember somebody who is just struggling in their Christian walk. And God, I pray that we would just share these verses with them. And God, I pray that we would just come along beside them Lord, there are people that fall by the wayside. And I pray, Lord, that we would stop. Even though we're running the race, Lord, it's not about competition. It's taking people with you. So God, I pray that we would be effective witnesses to people around us and we would encourage people in the faith. And God, we'd give you the praise and the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.